So we've talked about um, representing motion as a motion diagram, um, which were um, here. Um, an axis with uh, dots to represent the ob uh, object, and each dot is equally spaced in time. Um, so I want to talk about another way of representing motion, which is motion graph. Um, you see that um, each point here has um, each point has a position and a time, right? There's a position represented by where this is and a time represented by the label on the point. So we could um, we could plot that on a position versus time graph. Um, so that's what I'm talking about this time. Um, so let's go to um, example number six. It says, um, recall the student walking to class. So we did this last time, and that's where I copied this um, motion diagram from. So she starts by walking at a medium pace, 180 minutes, uh, sorry, meters in three minutes, then 60 meters in three minutes, and then 300 meters in three minutes. And that's represented on this x-axis. We'd like to go about, ultimately, building a position versus time graph for this. Um, so let's construct a table of um, positions and um, times. Really, these are ordered pairs, right? Um, it says to use one minute as the time step. One minute is not an SI unit. Um, so if we wanted to plot this in SI units, we could plot it in seconds. But minutes are convenient here because um, I can do this. Zero, one, two, three, four, and so forth. And that's our entire trip, right? Zero through nine minutes. Um, and then let's put positions on this. Let's make positions, I don't care, blue, because we can. Um, so we're starting at the origin. Why? Why do we start at the origin? Do we know to start at the origin? Well, um, position has an arbitrary zero, which just means it does not matter what you call zero. Um, so we might as well start there. Um, in fact, the uh, the real um, reasoning here is um, the answer to your problem cannot depend on what you call zero, right? Zero is a reference point. Um, so sometimes we choose positions that are not intuitively zero to be zero because it makes the math easier. And we'll see that in uh, future problems. Okay, so position versus time um, as ordered pairs. So. Um, what do we know? We know some some points along the way. We know after three minutes we've gone 180 meters, so that's this guy right here. Um, and we assume, like I said last time, we're assuming um, a steady rate. So you've uh, traveled a third of the trip between 0 and 1, 1 and 2, and 2 and 3. So if I divide 180 by 3, I get 60. Um, and so this must be what's going on. Fabulous. In the next three minutes, 4, 5, and 6, we're traveling, um, come on, man. We're traveling another 60 meters, so 60 meters on top of where we were, right? So I'm not resetting zero. Once I choose where zero is, I need to stick with it. So 60 meters on top of this 180 is 240 at this point. And again, I'll assume that 60 is traveled in um, three equal steps. Um, so 60 divided by three is 20, so that must be 200, 220, and 240. Man, this uh, this table would have been convenient to have when I built this um, motion diagram, right? Something to think about. Um, and then the last uh, three minutes is 300 meters, so that's 100 meters every minute, right? So 240, 340, 440, and 540. Um, and yeah, we ended at about 540 right here, so that, that um, makes sense. Good, means we did it right last time. Fabulous. So we did it. We constructed a table of position versus time. And then the next step is plot position versus time for the student's trip. Okay, so I drew some axes here. Um, put position on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. So that's um, interesting, right? Um, but it kind of makes sense. Typically, when we plot something as a, as a function of time, time is on the x-axis. So this is time. Oops, I really don't want it to be a pencil. I want it there. That's time. 
Um, and we're going to plot it in minutes again. It's not the SI unit, but that's fine. Not a huge deal. Um, and we're going to put position on the y-axis. So x is y, or y is x. I don't know. As long as we label it, it's okay. So this is x in meters, right? So minutes is min because if I just call it m, that would be confusing. Okay, so how do we go about plotting this? Well, I need to, to mark out some some points, right? Some um, some tick marks on my graphs. So what I'm going to do is um, grab our ruler so that it's mostly uniform. Um, we'll see if that actually helps. Uh, so we're going to call the origin um, 0, 0, right? That makes sense. Um, and then I'm going to go to 10, 10 um, minutes. Why not, right? So my I'm using the um, the, the uh, table here to decide that. I'm, I need my range in, in time to go to include 9, right? 0 to 9. So if I go to 10, that's that's plenty. Um, where did my ruler go? Come on, buddy. There you are. Okay. So do these tick marks work out? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, eh, ish. You know what? I'm not going to use the ruler. Um, because it's not the scale that I want. I want 10 to end up pretty much all the way to the right. So there's 10. And then I could eyeball about half. It's about half. And then um, I need 5 points. So if I go halfway between 0 and 5, let's label these. There's 10. There's 5. I know that they're minutes because I put that over here. Um, okay. So then halfway between 0 and 5 is 2.5, and I don't really want that to be a tick mark. So um, let's do, that looks about right. Eh. Let's see if we can get a little better than about. And more or less. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I wouldn't have to label each one of these, but... Um, it's a choice, right? Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's good enough. Good enough. This is the curse of the um, eraser is I can tweak this as much as I want. Okay. Uh, okay, that's pretty good for time. Uh, for position, um, I need to go from zero to five forty, so I could go to six hundred. So let's make the very top of this six hundred. And then I could mark every 100 in between. So let's mark about halfway is 300. And then thirds here, 400, 500. And again, we're doing this by hand, so it's not you know perfect. But um, if we wanted it to be perfect, we could use a computer. Or we could use a, a ruler. Again, I would be using the, the built-in ruler here, but I can't change the scale. Or I don't know how to. doesn't really matter. Okay, so we're going to plot this. Um, let's plot it in blue. And let's make let's make that a lot bigger. I think that'll work. Yeah, that's pretty good. So 0, 0 is our first point. Um, and then we're just going to go through this table. I'm going to bring up the table on another screen for myself so I can see it. Um, so the first point is 60. So 1 and 60. 60 is a little less than, um, sorry, a little more than halfway to 100. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball that. Again, if I wanted this to be absolutely perfect, you could plot this on a computer. Um, 120 for 2 is about here. 120, it's a little less than... I'm actually not super in love with my one's a little off <laughs> again the curse of um, being able to fix things and it's a blessing and a curse okay so this points I don't know like here that was one I'll just live with, with that being the wrong color um, Point three is 180. 180 is a little higher, almost 200, right? Beautiful. Okay, um, four is 200, so that's like pretty much 
in the same line. The next point is 220, which is also pretty much the same line. And then 240, which is not quite halfway. Okay. And then 7 is 340. 340 is just about, you know what? There's another use for that ruler. Look at that. 340 is about, it's a little less than halfway. It's about there. And 7, oh, come on. Come on. You're killing me, Smalls. Uh, now you're literally killing me. Perfect. Okay, 440. And 540. Right about here. Is it really 440? Yeah, it's about 440. Okay, that's pretty good. All right. So there's position versus time. Generally, I would not connect these points with a line. Um, although for this graph, I think it would be okay. Um, yeah, let's let's do it. What line should we use? What color should we use? Let's use green and make it just a little smaller and put our ruler. So you see three kind of straight line regions, right? Please snap to the, to the ruler. There. There's one straight st straight line region. There's another straight line region. And there's more or less another straight line region. Great. Look at that. Okay, so that uh, actually gives us our first um, our first point here, which is um, the slope. Uh, on position versus time for uniform motion is uniform, right? In fact, let's think about that. Switch to purple. Let's think about that. Um, if I take this, right? So I could say this region. Look at that dotted line. Oh, no. And over here. So here I have a rise and a run, right? So here's a run, and here's a rise. There. Um, what are those? Well, the rise here is a delta x, right? Come on. And the run is a delta t. And what is rise over run? That's slope, right? Slope is rise over run. And rise over run, uh, we should just said the rise was a delta x and the run is a delta t. So what is delta x over delta t? That's velocity, right? Or it's average velocity. So um, slope of a position versus time graph is um, velocity. And that's signed, um, so it really is a vector, right? If the position were going backwards, the velocity would be negative. Um, okay, fabulous, fabulous. Um, let's move forward, let's move forward. Um, so, uh, we can even look actually at this data. We could calculate all of these, all of these speeds. Let's do that quickly. Um, so in this region, we had one, that was this guy. We could call that V1. In this region, we had another one. In this region, we had another one, V2 and V3. Um, and to find the slope of these regions, again, these are all straight line regions, I can take any two points and do a delta x over delta t, right? Um, to get a, an average, I could use the entire region. So I could just say, um, in region one, the delta x, over delta t. In region 1, the delta x is um, 
180 meters, and the delta t is 3 minutes. And so my speed here is 180 over 3, which is 60 meters per minute. Um, and notice um, there are 60 minutes, uh, sorry, sorry, 60 seconds in a minute. So this is actually a meter per second, right? One meter per second. Um, you can use uh, your official unit conversion to get that if you want. Uh, but, but it works out kind of instinct-wise as well. For V2, that was 60 meters. Uh, come on. For V2, that's 60 meters. My palm keeps hitting the thing. In um, three minutes, which is uh, 20 meters per minute. Let's just keep it in minutes for now. Meters per minute. And for V3, that's 300 meters in three minutes, which is 100 meters per minute. OK. So just for our reference, V3, V2, and V1, all in the same units. So 60 meters per minute, 20 meters per minute, and 100 meters per minute. OK, fabulous. Um, how does that help us? Because the next thing I'd like to do is plot velocity versus time for this trip. Okay, um, so I'm going to grab the, um, the axes. I don't really need the data, but I'll delete it in a second. I'm to copy it, I'm to paste. Let's see if I can move that whole thing just a little bit. I'm going to try to line it up. Okay. So let's erase the data. The time axis can stay, but I'm going to erase the um, the vertical axis because the vertical axis doesn't have to be the same thing. Okay, but the time axes line up. Do you see that? Um, at least that's my intention is for them to line up pretty well. Three lines up with three. More or less. OK. Uh, so I want to plot velocity versus time. Now, velocity versus time really only has three um, regions, right? Just like position versus time. But position was changing, and velocity is not. So this is um, this is uh, uniform motion, as we've uh, kind of modeled it. Uniform motion of three different regions. So I need to go from 0 to 100. So I could, uh, I don't know. I don't like the top of the scale to be the, um, I don't like the top of the scale to be the end of my graph. I like to have a little headspace there. Come on. So let's see. If I start at 0 and go 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, that's pretty OK. This way, they'll definitely be evenly spaced. Going. So I want this to be 120, this is 100, and then 20, 40, 60, 80. What are these? This is velocity in meters per minute. Again, not the SI unit, not the end of the world. If we were going to do further math with this, I would suggest we change this to SI units. Okay, so um, what we can do here, let's plot this in green, is say, well, okay, in the first region, it was 60, and that was all the way to 3 minutes. So 0 to 3 minutes. And then um, from 3 minutes to 6 minutes, it was 20. I would like that to not be there. there. So there's 20 from 3 minutes, almost, from 3 minutes to 6 minutes. And then um, that was, oh, and then from six minutes to nine minutes, it's a hundred. So there's six to nine. Okay, that's pretty okay. I uh, I'm only a little bit of a perfectionist. Okay. 
So what I want to point out here is this. Uh, we've got three straight line regions, um, and um, those um, definitely line up with the regions above. Do you see that? Um, I can't keep it unzoomed without holding the pinch. So I want you to see, oh, there, three minutes and three minutes line up, six minutes and six minutes line up, and these slopes match up with these flat lines. So the flat lines match up with the slopes. That's fabulous. Um, I could dot this in between and say, oh, here's the transition. So here's something. If the... Um, If these are, are constant speeds for these three regions, what's happening at three minutes and at six minutes? Well, you're not um, you're not instantly changing, really, right? To go from sixty meters per minute to twenty meters per minute, you've got to slow down, and you've got to speed up from twenty to a hundred. So um, those wouldn't actually be vertical lines, but that's an okay. It's an okay approximation. There's one other thing I want to mention here. Um, one other relationship. Uh, but you know what? Uh, I will do that next time. So I'll keep you in suspenders. Thanks for watching.